teach and drive. Well, Yeshiva College is back in the news, and uh, the rabbinical community won't like it. There's a full-page ad in the, the Australian Jewish News attacking some of the hate that's been go- gone on there. The cover-ups have gone on there over the years. This is after a magistrate said it was unfathomable that Rabbi Abraham Glick did not know at the time that sex abuse was allegedly going on there in the 1980s. Now, Rabbi Glick is still there. One of the things he's involved in, he's head of student well-being. Uh, he... Um, he, he, he was a principal of the East St Kilda School at the time of most alleged offences. He originally said he'd only recently become aware of accusations that a security guard, uh, David Samuel Cyprus, had molested children. But then he changed his evidence under oath in the Melbourne Magistrates Court and admitted he was aware of the rumours back in the early 2000s. That's prompted a, uh, a um, philanthropist, uh, Moishi Gordon. He's a long-standing member of the Yeshiva community. He says he'll bank Rabbi Abraham saying that Rabbi Abraham, uh, Abraham Glick must go and that has appeared in the, in the latest edition of the newspaper. On the line now, victim of that abuse at the, col- at the college. Manny Wax, good afternoon again. Good afternoon, there. Well, I know you've never given up on this, and s- the stories keep appearing. I must give a dual tops field at the, the education of the age has been hammering the story and uh, sometimes up against brick walls for, for months and months and months. So this latest um, action in the, in the Australian Jewish News, it must be encouraging. It is encouraging, but it's also a troubling development that so many supporters felt compelled to take out a paid ad in all the major Jewish media outlets, not just in the Jewish news. And I'm also delighted that others are now starting to voice their opposition publicly to what is currently taking place in Yeshiva. Well, because what was happening... See, we're going back to, uh, to other cases with the other, the other um, molester who ended up... David in, Kramer. David Kramer, who went to the United States. I mean, that, that in, in itself, that was enough in my mind to have caused, should have caused, an educational and a community revolution at the college. Absolutely, Darren. Uh, the problem is they, they don't get it. Um, it, it. This is, I think, only the tip of the iceberg. We're talking about two alleged perpetrators at this stage. Um, there are, uh, there's knowledge, significant knowledge, that there are other alleged victims, as other, many other victims, and certainly other perpetrators as well. So I think the Yeshiva Centre needs to get its act together and start correcting uh, their actions. The biggest thing that seems, the theme seems to be, is not only is this had happened in the Catholic Church, and now it's happening here, is that keep it in-house. You know, it'll, um, it'll embarrass the community. It'll embarrass the institution. Or it'll damage the institution. That's the sort of thinking that cannot be allowed to happen. That was thinking from 30, 40 years ago. You're right. I mean, the issue now is not only what did or didn't happen years ago, but what is happening now. There's clearly an attempt by the Yeshiva Centre leadership to deliberately cover up everything that happened, as proved by the comments of, uh, of the magistrate, as you pointed out, mm-hmm. who said it's unfathomable. I mean, it's just outrageous that this is happening. Also, just as the Yeshiva leadership facilitated some of the crimes committed back then, they're now facilitating the re-victimisation, harassment and intimidation of the victims and their families, merely for speaking out about these crimes. Do you think people are still scared to bypass the rabbis and go straight to the police? There is no question about that, Darren. Absolutely. There is a code of silence that is difficult to break. It's, um, I think we've made some significant progress, but I think we have a long way to go. There are many victims out there, and many in the Jewish community, in the Chabad community, or the Yeshiva Centre, know who these people are, but they don't want to come forward about this. And I also want to emphasise that some of the victims' greatest supporters are actually from within the yeshiva community. So we should be careful not to tarnish the entire community. Mm, We've done and continue to do so many positive things. The problems lie with the leadership and hardcore blind and unquestioning followers. And even people like Rabbi Groner and Glick, they've done a lot of good over so many years. But on this issue, they got it wrong. They got it very wrong, and there needs to be accountability. They, they not only got it wrong, but then, as always, as with Watergate, uh, it's not the crime of being bad enough. It's the, uh, it's the attempt to preserve the institution that's the problem. That's right. For them, the institution is paramount, and that's, they're willing to put that in well, uh, above the well-being of the victims who have gone through so much pain and suffering over so many years. And that's why many are calling now for Rabbi Glick to resign, but there also needs to be wholesale changes at the executive level as well. Yes. I mean, the situation is further complicated at the executive by the fact that so many in the leadership group are related. The qualifications of some of them also to hold these positions should rightly be questioned. And just lastly, with the explicit threats of excommunication for speaking out by the yeshiva rabbi and at his recent uh, Sabbath sermon, he yeah. too should be seriously scrutinized. Right. I know we'll talk about it again. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Darren. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Many wax.
listening to Drive.